going back to advanced manipulations. Um, in certain conditions, if we have a data tree that has two significant indices within the, uh, within the tree, we can use something called a flip matrix. And this, again, instead of moving along a path, like kind of growing it or shrinking it, the objects we're going to be looking at now allow us to actually redefine the data structure itself. So it kind of will shuffle things around. Uh, the objects we'll look at will either shuffle things around, um, kind of resort the objects, etc. Uh, okay. So let's go back into, uh, into Grasshopper. And the file we're going to be reviewing next is 1-3 flip. Right, so this is where we're going to go. We're going to add in a few things for fun, like a gradient object. And um, there's about I don't know, 12 objects here for us to actually execute. And what we're going to do is actually bring a surface in, divide it into points, and then based on this uh, image sampler, translate the points um, in the, direction, the normal direction of the surface. Then start to work with uh, manipulating data trees. Okay, so let's save this as a working file. Dash W. We'll get rid of all this. We're going to build this up from scratch together. All right, so this is working with data trees, image sampling, and flip matrix. All right, so the first thing we need is a surface. So I'm going to go ahead and create a plane object in Rhino, put into shaded. This is an easy way for me to create a surface. And I want to actually make it kind of curvy. So I'll just uh, very quickly do edit, rebuild, and give it some more control points that I can work with, degree three, and hit OK. Turn the control points on, and I'll um, move these points vertically. There we go. Simple, curvy surface. All right, this is going to be where we start. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this surface into Grasshopper. The way we're going to do that is we're going to go to Param's Geometry Surface, and we're going to use this surface container to store this surface. So I'm going to right-click. Set one surface, select it, now I see it, and I'll turn the preview off so it doesn't look you know, funky. And um, a good practice that we uh, use all the time is to label any of the objects that are significant in the file. So this is my reference surface. All right, so now we have our surface in Grasshopper. We want to get points on this surface. All right, so we're going to go to the Surface tab under Utility, Divide Surface. All right, this takes in the surface and the number. OK, it seems like we have a second mic on. So we'll address that. Thank you for pointing that out. We'll double check the audio settings. All right, so. Um, with this surface, we're going to um, divide it into points. So we're going to connect the surface into S. And we need two sliders to define the number of segments in U and V. So let's go ahead and use our trick from before. 1 less than 10 less than 25. This is my num U. And um, V by doing a duplicate. We're going to connect U and V. So now I have control over how many points I have. Now, when we created our grid of points, they were located and organized in a specific two dimensional context, and that was X and Y. So in a surface, we also conveniently have a two dimensional context. Does anyone know what the two uh, conventional letters are that describe the surface's coordinate space? Well, you're probably familiar with them already because we just connected 
two sliders to U and V. You got it. You guys are really sharp. Well done. So out of this, we have both points and normal vectors as well as UV coordinates. So let's take a quick peek at how our points are organized by dropping a Pram viewer. It's from Pram's utility. So now we have 14 branches, each with 14 items on it. So in order to make this a little bit clear, I'll change one of these sliders so they're different. So now I have eight branches of 14. All right, so automatically out of the grids, out of the service divide, we get a data tree, right? Now, um, if you're new to Grasshopper, you may have, have had to many times just flatten that automatically and start, start from there, right? But if we use the, the data tree objects that we just review, reviewed for basic manipulations and the next set, which we're going to review for more advanced manipulations, you can actually use this to your advantage. So it's actually pretty convenient that things are organized in rows or columns. All right, so we have eight branches of 14. And what we want to do is uh, first draw a set of curves through the points. And in, in case you wanted to label any of your objects here in the canvas, the way we have, we use the group. So I select an object, you can do Control G or Edit Group. And now there's a field here, uh, a white box, in my case, that I can right click and specify a label in this first empty field. So this is Divide Surface. All right, so now we have points organized in the U and V. And what we want to do is we want to draw curves through those points. So let's just try it and see what we get. If we go to the Curve tab and grab the, from Spline Interpolate, we can connect our points, which are organized in groups of 14, into V directly. I'll hide my surface, and now you'll see that we have curves going in the, let's say, column direction. Right now, why is that? It's going in the U direction of our surface. So we specified seven for number of U uh, divisions, which gives us eight collections of points. And if we supply an object, uh, we supply those points to an object like interpolate, it tries to do that action for every data path. In this case, we have 14 points traveling in the U direction of our surface, and it creates one curve through all those points. So it's creating the curve through the points on each path. Okay, now let's say I don't want to draw the curves that direction, I want to draw the curves the other direction. This is where our flip matrix comes in. If we look at our data, structure, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So we're going to call these A, B, and C. Which of the indices, A, B, or C, in this data structure are overlapping? Go ahead and type that into the, the chat window. A, B, and C. What's overlapping? Or another way to describe it is, what is not changing through these paths? A and B. You got it. All right, so C is significant. And then also at the leaf level, we have I, right? So in this case, there's only two portions of our data structure, two levels that are important. Level C and level I, which is the leaf level. If you only have two significant levels to your data tree, you can flip. If you have more, flip doesn't work. So let's go to sets, tree, flip matrix, and let's drop in points into the flip matrix and replace the input to V for our interpolate curve as well as our pram viewer. Instead of eight branches of 14, we now have 14 branches of eight. And instead of having curves drawn in the U direction, we now have curves drawn in the V direction. All right. 
So while we're here, let's let's use one more um, uh, more advanced object in order to have an option to toggle between do I want them to go in the U or the V. The way we're going to do that is under sets tree stream filter. It's going to filter a collection of input streams. So drop that onto the canvas. Now it sets tree stream filter. This takes in the index of which one of these we want to choose, 0 or 1. And then the, the inputs, and it will give us the return based on which one we choose. All right, so we're going to take our original points through here into 0. And our flip matrix object, the result of that, into 1. All right, and now we need a way to control G. Does anyone know an easy way to control G by specifying a 0 or a 1? I'll give you a hint. It's not a slider, and it is on the input drop-down from Pram's input. All right, we already have answers. Boolean toggle, you've got it. True and false are the same thing as 1 and 0. So we can use a Boolean toggle into G. Now, if we replace the inputs of our Pram Viewer and our Curve object with this, we can toggle between U and V directions. All right. So now we have the, the basic part of our file complete. The next part is that we want to now uh, offset our points relative to the surface normal direction. 